What's up everyone? It's been a while since I've made one of these videos and I am extremely excited to be back in particular with this video which I've titled Success Clues with Cole and El Hamami. What we're going to do in this video is watch some of the highlights from the recent British Open final, specifically Hani El Hamami and Nuran Gohar's match. But before we get there, I'm going to go over the transcript of the post-match interviews for both Hani El Hamami and Paul Cole. Because there are certain critical clues that they mention in their interviews that all of us can learn from if we have aspirations in our lives to become successful in sport, in business, as a parent, you know, whatever your goal may be. There's one theme I'm just going to mention. I'm going to let you guys reflect upon it. If you want to learn more, wait till the end of the video, please. And that theme is that the thoughts that we have create our reality. And taking it one step, going one step behind that is that the values and the beliefs that are in our mind, either that we have adopted because of our upbringing, from our culture, from our society, from our influences, or that we have consciously created for ourselves as adults. And there's a whole process behind how you can do all of that stuff. Um, that is critical. Having the awareness of the power of our values and our beliefs and our thoughts creating our reality is really important. And then there's the other side, which is that our actions are a reflection of our beliefs. So giving you a very specific example, and we're going to see this with Hani Al Hamami in particular, she clearly has a belief of the value of grit, the value of effort, the value of persistence and perseverance. And that comes out not only in her post-match interview, but it also comes out in the way she plays because she never gives up. So this is a little clue for you guys is that if you have a desire to reflect on your values and your beliefs to determine what's driving you and maybe why you have certain blocks in certain areas of your lives or how you can extend your success in one area to another area, raise your self-awareness by looking at your actions and the areas in your life, the places where you choose to spend your time, how you choose to spend your money and all of those sorts of things will actually give you an indication of what your values and your belief system look like. So let's let's move on to step one, which is looking at the post match interviews. And this one is we're going to start with Hani Al Hamami. For anyone that is in transit, anyone who doesn't want to look down at their device or at their screen, you can just listen to my voice. If you don't like my voice, put it on mute and you can read it yourself. So she said, Nuran has been giving me a lot of tough times. I've never been able to get a proper win against her. The last time I won, she retired at 2-1, so I never got a proper win. So getting the win in this final in this way means a lot to me. What this shows me, again, looking at the words she's using, she's hungry, she's driven, she's dedicated. Even though she got a win against Nuran, she didn't actually beat her because Nuran retired. So in Hanya's mind, she's like, I want to go prove a point. I want to cement my dominance. I want to assert my dominance, maybe. Those are clues to the way that she's thinking. She goes on to say, it was 8-1 in the head-to-head. -head. So every time I play Neuron, I turn off my notifications because I don't want to see the predictions. So I just tried to come here today and give it my all. I always knew I had the game to beat her, but I wasn't consistent enough to win. So I guess today I was very solid and kept my focus to be consistent to beat her. This one is critical. There's so many factors in this, and she echoes these factors in the next section of her interview as well. She turns off her notifications. This is critical. This is a controllable factor. So we, I always ta teach my clients and the people I consult with about controllable and, and uncontrollable factors. And this definition of success from former legendary UCLA coach John Wooden, which you've probably heard me mention before if you've watched other videos, and I'm paraphrasing, he says that success is the peace of mind associated from knowing that you did the best that you are capable of. So it's all about controlling your effort. There are many things in life that are totally out of our control, such as the weather, such as court conditions, how the ball is moving, whether the referee makes a bad call, whether your opponent is blocking, not calling double bounces, whatever it is, you slip on court. Those are all uncontrollable factors. The only thing we can control is how we show up mentally, physically, with our preparation, our nutrition, our hydration, our practice before, all of that kind of stuff. 
What I love here is that she's talking about controllable factors. She chooses to turn off her notifications. That is a controllable factor. And she's also calling out the point that there's the attention and focus aspect of it, and there's the distraction side of it. So for, for you guys, I'm sure you've heard this, but I will, re, I will uh, re, restate it in case you haven't heard it. A lot of research has shown that if we are engaged in a complex activity, if we get distracted with a phone by someone interrupting, it can take anywhere from 5, 10, up to 20 or even 30 minutes to regain that level of focus. So not only that, but when you see in her case, she's talking about predictions, she wants her mind to be oriented in a very positive way with the vision that she has and with the belief, supporting the belief that she has. So she doesn't want anything coming and clouding any of the work that she's already doing and affecting the expectations and the outlook that she has in her mind. So I think that's really critical. The whole controllable factor piece and effort comes in when she says, so I just tried to come here today and give it my all. Then there's belief. I always knew I had the game to beat her, but I wasn't consistent enough to win. So she has belief in her abilities and knowing that she has the tools, she's put the work in, she has confidence, but she also recognized consistency and in her case, inconsistency, not allowing her to win. A ton of factors that I think you guys can take away from just this one little section of her speech. Think about it, reflect upon it in your own life and see how many of these factors you are actually bringing out in your own life on a day-to-day -day basis. She goes on to say, the first thing I thought of was that I wanted to tell myself I can do it without anyone. I can do it and it's all within my own hands. It's all in my mentality and whenever I have my mind right, I can beat Nuran. I used to struggle a lot against her because I wasn't consistent enough and as I said, I wanted to make a statement to myself that I can do it. So much here. I can do it. Empowered mindset. She's taking things into her own hands. There's ownership. That's personal power. That's huge. She, at the beginning of it, she says, I wanted to tell myself that I can do it without anyone. Again, that's personal power. That's owning it. Controllable. I can do it. It's all within my own hands. Belief in controllable. It's in my mentality. She understands that the way she's talking to herself, the way she's thinking about it, the vision that she's creating in her mind will have a massive, massive effect on the final outcome. And she, again, she talks about consistency and there's this hunger in her as well of wanting to do it. The last thing she goes on to say is, I dedicate this win to my parents. They're always supporting me in my wins and losses. So this one is for them. And this is just highlighting the importance of a support structure. It could be family, it could be coaches, it could be a physical therapist, it could be friends, it could be your partner, it doesn't matter. But oftentimes for most people, having someone to support you helps a lot when it comes to optimal performance and success and sustaining that over a period of time. Let's look at a couple of points from Paul Cole. This first quote is in reference to something one of his friends said before the match and he essentially said something along the lines of, no one gave you the world number one spot easily so don't give it up easily. And in reference to that, he's saying, it sort of motivated me this week just to try and defend this title as hard as I could and all I wanted to do was give my best effort out there. And again, he's talking about controllable. He can only control his best effort. And he's talking about that in line with the definition of success I shared earlier. It's the peace of mind and knowing that you did the best you're capable of. So he's going and giving his all because that to him is success and that's all he can control. So I think this is echoed by Hanya, by Paul and John Wooden and tons and tons of other people out there. Now, let me, be, let me make one thing clear. Focusing on effort and effort being your definition of success does not mean that you don't set goals. What it means is that you set your goals, you have a vision, you have a target because you have to know what you're aiming for, but then you come back to the present moment and you just do the best that you're capable of. This goes back to the process versus outcome-based thinking that I've mentioned in other videos where process-based thinking is present moment thinking thinking squash in particular, thinking about everything you need to do in the moment when you're on the squash court, push up on the tee, hunt the volley, watch the ball, you know, whatever, if you're working on combinations or patterns, whatever you're working on, that's your process. 
outcome-based thinking would be win this match tomorrow you're going to play this person then you're going to win the tournament if you're thinking outcome-based like that that's future-oriented thinking and you're not actually able to perform optimally in the moment because your mind is distracted and paul cole and hania both reference this importance of putting your effort and they're also referencing process-based thinking without actually saying it cole goes on to say I just try and calm down. I put that credit down to my whole team, Rob, Lee, Francisco, Bart. Everyone just gives me amazing advice and I just take it all in. I'm super clear about what I'm doing on court these days and it just makes my life easier. I always have a game plan and I just try and execute it. I focus on myself. I'm feeling great on court. I'm enjoying my squash, but it's the people around me who really make me able to play like this. So again, critical factors. He's talking about relaxation. That's That comes from knowing who you are. Some people are overly relaxed and they need to be hyped up, you need a different strategy. So awareness of your own needs is number one. From there, he talks about the value of a team. He talks about focus. He talks about, by when he says, I'm super clear about what I'm doing on court. He talks about having a game plan, so strategic planning. He talks about enjoying his squash. That's huge, just going out there and having fun. This is one thing I see with a lot of juniors nowadays where it's become almost like a business and there's so much pressure on the kid that they're no longer having fun. They're training four, five, six hours a day. They're getting emotionally and physically burnt out, picking up injuries. And sure, they might still be having some fun, but over time, doing that month after month after month, that leads to burnout and they don't want to be there anymore. So very, very critical to be mindful of keeping it fun and not making this a chore. If you make it a chore, then you're never gonna perform your best out there. Cole goes on to say, I think if you look at my forehand about three years ago, I wouldn't be able to do that. My coach probably has one of the best forehands in the game, so credit to him for changing my technique. It's taken about three years, but thanks for noticing this. So this is, this is a powerful statement again. There's this idea of belief, because he's talking about the belief and the trust that he has in his coach. He's also talking about <laughs> the fact that it's taken him three years. And that reflects on patience, commitment, consistent action, perseverance, determination, vision, belief, all of these things. I, I was talking to one of my students yesterday and he's a young kid, so he's still maturing in many ways. And we were talking about making a, a minor adjustment to his technique so that he can, you know, he, he can get initial rotation so that his body's not opening up when he's hitting his volleys and so on. He tried it for five minutes and he's like, I can't do this. And I gave him this example of Paul Cole. And I told him that it took, he spent three years already being one of the top 10 players in the world, three years to continue to work on his forehand to get it right. Having an expectation to get things done like this, which has become a cultural thing nowadays, is actually somewhat laughable uh, and I'm not saying that disrespectfully but just l look at what Paul Cole's saying and hopefully that reorients our perspective towards the amount of time and effort and commitment it actually takes to create long-lasting results so if I were to summarize some of these factors that I've talked about hopefully this is can be a little cheat sheet for you both players talk about hunger and drive and the key thing is that they talk about controllable factors and they talk about putting maximal effort. They're not talking about going and just winning and winning three love and all of that because that's not controllable. They're talking about putting the maximum effort that they're capable of. They both have a ton of belief and confidence and faith in their own abilities. And again, it's all controllable. They go in with a game plan, their strategic planning, they, all of that. Then they talk about the importance of consistency. Anyone can well not anyone very good players can maybe win a game off of an equally good player or the world number one in their cases you cannot be inconsistent and beat a player of that caliber that's that's just what it is so this takes a lot of attention and focus because the more consistent you are the fewer lapses you have the fewer wrong shots you hit the fewer unforced errors you make so that is huge and they both talk about support structure, the importance of having the people there. And then obviously the, the one they didn't mention 
is just the hours and hours of hard and smart training that they both put in leading up to events. And this also ties back into the consistency. So if you're looking at fundamental factors for success, this isn't uh, an exhaustive list, but it is, uh, it's a robust list that if you can focus on these factors, you will start to see success in your lives. Okay. If we think about the Hani Al-Hamami and Nuran Gohar game in particular, let's get into that a little bit. So in that match, and I got a couple of very simple stats from cross-court analytics. Hania talked about focus and attention. She talked about belief and confidence and being positive. And she talked about grit and resilience. There were a couple, of, when I watched the match, I found it really interesting that she had a lot more variety than she normally does. And she was just hitting a ton more winners than she does. And I just looked at the winner error count. And what I noticed is that both, both ladies hit about equal errors on forced and forced errors and this is all from cross court analytics guys check out their website they have a lot of cool stats and reports from different matches they also have some services if you want to go and get a report of your own mate so el hamami hit 13 errors gohar 14 not that different but the winners el hamami hit 23 winners to gohar's 13 winners and to me the winners is a real sign of her confidence and her belief in her ability to go out and execute and play an attacking game. And you could see that through the rallies. So let's check out a few highlights from their match. And this first one is actually the very first rally of the match. And you can see this, and this is all thanks to Squash TV, PSA Squash TV. So if you wanna watch the full match, please go on their website and subscribe to their service. You see the ladies already stepping up, looking to really hunt the ball hitting their targets in the back of the court, volleying a lot, both playing quality squash, and El Hamami's already starting to put in some work. Truthfully, as I watched the match, she was putting in a significant amount of work, and I was a little bit, I was questioning whether she can sustain that level of intensity and effort for so long, and she did. So her grit, mental toughness and obviously all the work she's put in physically is incredible she lost that rally but that is the first rally of the match folks i don't know about you but when you play and if you have a hard first rally oftentimes we give up after the first one or two hard movements she made multiple hard movements from the very beginning of this match and that sends a message to your opponent whether you win or lose that rally gohar now knows that this is going to be tough she's going to have to earn every point out there if you give your opponent an easy point, you're sending them that message of, it might be easy. I'm going to give you a couple of easy ones. It could be, you make it hard for me, I might just fold. So really, really important to manage that. The next thing, let's check out how El Hamami reorients herself mentally. So I'm showing you this initial rally where she's under a lot of pressure, putting in a lot of work and hits the ball out for context. So check this out. She already hit a boast and then she goes in and she hits another trickle boast, not the right shot because she was Gohar was already in front, she was in position. Gohar gets on that ball, El Hamami forced to do work and tries to defend. It's loose, forced to do more work, tries to defend again correctly, but the ball goes out. So now if you watch, she's giving herself a positive affirmation of how what she did effectively in that rally she's giving herself the self-belief she's giving herself the reinforcement and the motivation to continue to do everything she needs to do that she's probably repeating some affirmations or some mantras about how she wants to play she's probably also reflecting on what she did incorrectly and what she needs to shift in subsequent rallies moving forward things for you guys to reflect upon as you think about your own games and how you perform in your own games so now we're gonna show you guys three rallies with a mix of attacking and defending. So a couple of them are gonna be how El Hamami really used angles and volleying and stepping up and attacking. And then one of them is showing her grit of how she was so effective with her defense. So the first one is about attacking. So great serve, putting pressure, nice attacking angle, great fading length in the volley, forcing another loose ball, another fading attack and then another fading attack, forcing the error. So if you watch this again, watch this serve. 
nice and high, avoids, uh, prevents the volley from Gohar, hits the back target, gets a lucky bounce, forcing a loose ball from Gohar, shows a straight drop, that was one shot that she was using, and then hits the cross, forcing Gohar to do some work. On the tee, getting ready for the volley, and this was great. If you haven't watched my video about what the definition of a good length with Ali Farag, I'll reference that over here. But you see this ball is fading away from Gohar and moving into the side wall. So right when Gohar is hitting it, the ball is tight. The result, another loose ball. Hamami hits another kill attempt going into the side wall. She looks to hunt the volley, but it's nice wide cross court from Gohar. So she respects that and moves back to make space. And then another lower fading length moving away from Gohar. Gohar does the right thing to defend, but hits the ball out. Let's check out the next rally. So again, get, trying to get that angle on the length, really hunting that volley, and then stepping up with pace on that. So watch this. Serve was not the best, but she made space. Looks to get that angle on the length, not quite tight enough, but really hunting that volley. And then look at that acceleration onto the ball over there. Not only is there acceleration, yeah, I got to show you guys this a couple of times. So from here, there's acceleration. She's moving forward, accelerating. And then this is where there's deception. Watch her chest and her racket come across. So that looks like she's hitting a cross court. Hence, Gohar's moving to the right side for the cross court, and then El Hamami hits the ball straight. She doesn't hit the perfect length. She catches the side wall pretty early, but the weight of stroke is good, and the deception throws Gohar off enough that she can't go and retrieve that ball. And the next thing, watch her reaction over here. It's a full yell might have even been <laughs> directed a little bit at Nuran Gohar. <laughs> kind of, it's a big, big point uh, over here. Critical to go up for game ball in the second game for a two-love uh, lead against Gohar, which she eventually did convert. So this was huge, and this shows her grit and her hunger and her tenacity in general. So Squash TV did a great job showing a couple of highlights here. So watch the quick volley and then the acceleration with that rotation to show the cross court deception. Now this rally shows the other side of the coin where El Hamami is putting in a lot of work in this rally. Really, really tight drives by both ladies over here. Nice and patient hitting. She looks to attack after forcing that. Gohard defends well. They're back into reset mode. little bit of interference, Al Hamami goes and plays it, Gohar plays the classic straight kill, good volleying by her, more interference and Al Hamami plays through that too. I respect that a lot about her game. Showing the drop and then playing the cross court drive. So the reason that worked really really well is I'm going to show you guys in just a second. So they're going to show this here where she goes in, has a little hold for that forehand straight drop and then plays the cross because the rally just before and this is the rally just before that watch what she does she comes here she sets up for the straight drop and plays that straight drop mm -hmm. so if you see her technique here racket is set and plays the straight drop to a winner if we go back to the previous rally well the one I showed you before but it's actually the next rally she sets up over here and watch so again let me let me clarify the rally i showed you where she plays that winning straight forehand drop actually took place just before this rally so she has just a moment ago shown gohar a forehand drop winner from that front right corner and now she goes gohar has to cover the threat of this forehand drop because she just got burnt by it and then El Hamami puts in a little hold, stun stops Gohar's movement, and plays a nice weight of stroke with the cross that Gohar is unable to retrieve. So this is just the idea of patterns and breaking patterns. She set the pattern of the forehand drop in the previous rally with a winner. Now she hold, shows the drop, holds, and then snaps the cross. Holds Gohar's movement because she has to respect that front right corner, and the result is 
the winning cross court with the hold. So folks, I hope that this video has shown you guys some key ideas around what it takes to be successful in any facet of life. There's a lot more to it, but I hope that this gives you guys a good foundation to reflect upon. And for any of you who are very, very keen and who appreciate the value of premium services and who want to work directly with me one-on-one -on, -one on your squash or your mindset, send me an email at aha.arperformance.com. My schedule is filling up. I've been uh, engaging in some more Fortune 500 corporate consulting as well, for which I'm very grateful. So if any of you guys want that, any kind of consulting for yourself on mindset, performance, excellence, or your squash, or if you're in an organization and you think your organization will benefit from certain things, lots to discuss. Send me an email at aha.arperformance.com. I look forward to hearing from you. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to receive your feedback. I'd love to hear your thoughts about some of the concepts we've discussed today. Take care, folks, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.